Hypothetical question. Let's say that you lost everything today. All of your photos, all of your work, all of the testimonials, all of your street cred, and you had to build a photography business from scratch. You're starting over, you got nothing. What would you do? Now that's a question I actually asked myself the other day. I was like, hmm, of all the things that I've learned along the journey of building my photography business in a few different countries and getting published and like building up this repertoire of work and getting testimonials, all that stuff, like what actually was the most effective and where would I start if I were starting over from scratch today, this year? So inside of this video, I'm gonna give you the five things I would focus on that I really think will propel your marketing forward. You ready? Let's get into it. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Ryan here at Signature Edits. Thank you so much for watching this video. Who am I? Well, I'm a guy who started Signature Edits because I actually learned all the photography marketing stuff the hard way and I wanted to share those lessons of kind of I picked up. You know, the things that I failed at, the things I wish someone had told me, I wanted to tell and share with other people. And most importantly, I've actually got a community here at Signature Edits that we've helped over 158,000 photographers. And I don't say that in a way to say like, oh, we're great. I mean it as in that's become a resource for me. I've learned a lot through conversations with people like you and actually getting the chance to talk with friends about what works, what doesn't work because something that works for me might not work for you in your city. And so having that chance has really broadened my perspective. And so I'm just gonna try and share that with you based on if I were doing this myself from scratch this year, what would I do? So that's what this video is all about. Hopefully it's helpful. And if it is, I'd love it if you'd hit that like button, leave a comment, let me know what your thoughts and questions are and I will definitely try and address those in a future video or answer you right away. Okay. So if I were starting from scratch, let's get over to step number one, which, which is I would actually focus on the niches, which is the niches. I'd niche down and develop the perfect avatar. Now, what do I mean by this? Okay, when you're building a photography business, the number one mistake that I've made in the past is trying to be all things to all people. You do family photography, you do wedding photography, you do corporate, you do commercial, you do adventure photography. Like you take all of these niches and you try and do them all or or you don't even go far enough and you say, okay, I'm gonna do adventure photography. Well, what does that mean? Do you do photography for motorcycle brands? Do you do photography for mountain bike brands? Do you do it for volleyball teams? Like what is adventure photography? And because you don't niche down far enough, your marketing isn't as effective as it could be. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say that you need to get heart surgery. You've got a problem with like the left top valve of your heart. Now, when you actually get a chance to look at the different surgeons available to you, Let's say you've got three options. You've got a GP, somebody who's just a normal doctor. He went to normal medical school and he knows a little bit. Like he could probably still help you, but that's all he did. Just normal medical school. He's got a vast array of experience in many, many different areas. Number two, you've got a specialized heart surgeon who all they do is surgeries. So obviously like this is sounding a lot more attractive. If you have a problem with your heart, you want a heart surgeon, right? Now let's take it one step further. Let's say option number three is a specialist heart surgeon who only does surgeries on that particular valve that you have problems with. Now, which of those doctors are you going to select to hire or to do that surgery? Obviously, it's going to be the one who is niched down, the one who is the specialty in that subject, in that problem that you have. Now, the same thing applies to your photography and especially to your marketing, because if your marketing is directed very, very narrow to that one person who needs that specialized surgery in that specialized place of their heart, and you say, I'm the person who does this and I do it better than anybody else, that is going to be way more powerful marketing than just having a photography website with a smattering of a million different types of work, okay? So I would start by niching down and saying, okay, who is my perfect customer? Like, who is the person I really wanna help? Who's the person I really wanna work with? And what's the kind of work I really wanna do? Like. The worst thing you can do is build a business for yourself, and I've learned this firsthand, that you actually don't enjoy. You just do it because you're chasing the money, and because you're chasing money but you don't enjoy it, it becomes a job, and because it's a job, you're not as creative as you could be. You don't go that extra mile, you don't produce the results you could, and you don't feel good about what you're doing, so you just don't show up in the way that you would otherwise. You're not motivated to go above and beyond and grow this thing. That has happened to me. You don't wanna do that. You don't wanna chase jobs just saying, oh, I'll do it because I need the money. You wanna build a business intentionally saying, what is it that I really wanna do here? What is it that I'm really good at and really passionate about? And you wanna go deep in that topic. You wanna to become the world's best at that thing. And that'll pay off far, far more, and you'll be able to build a business a lot faster. 
If you're trying to do all sorts of different things and you've got your eye on 10 different balls, it's going to be really, really hard to build that business momentum. For every additional stream of income that you're kind of pursuing, you're dividing your attention. And because you're dividing your attention, you're not putting as much resource into it. You're not growing as quickly. You're not going to get the same results as if you really narrow in on your focus, choose that niche and develop that perfect customer. Okay. You can't help someone until you know exactly how they need your help. And once you know that, then you can message them in a way that nobody else is. Okay. Number two. Step two is your portfolio and your testimonials are everything. People are not going to buy until they believe that you can give them the result they're looking for. So if I have a problem with my heart, I'm not going to buy until I see this heart surgeon has actually successfully done heart surgeries before, right? It kind of goes without saying, but people try and skip this step. And I did too, when I was starting out, I was like, I'm a wedding photographer. Had I ever shot a wedding? No. Had I ever actually produced a portfolio? No. Did I know what I was doing? No. And so all the marketing in the world I did, all the web design, all of the um, reaching out to people, all the cold emails, whatever none of it worked, none of it resonated because I didn't have a portfolio and I didn't have testimonials. And this can be a really tricky like chicken and an egg situation where it's like people won't hire me until I have experience, but I also need experience and testimonials so that they'll hire me. And it's just this weird thing, right? So how do you get around this? If I were starting over today and I had no work, no portfolio, no testimonials, I would do two things. The first thing is I would second shoot for people. I would contact all the photographers in my city. And this is actually originally how I got started. I literally went on to Google. I said, okay, I want to do wedding photography, wedding photographers in Sydney, Australia. I went through the top four pages of Google, every single page, every single website. And if their work kind of resonated with me, like I thought it was good work, I reached out and sent an email, said, hey, I'm happy to second shoot. I'm just looking to get into the industry, learn some stuff and shoot for free in exchange for the chance to kind of honestly learn from you and build my portfolio a little bit. You'll be amazed at how many good responses you get from this. Now, I went through probably four pages of Google, so I spent whatever, three hours sending 30 different emails. And in return, I wound up getting about three or four studios who reached back and said, yeah, absolutely. We have a wedding this week or we have a wedding two weeks from now or we have a wedding a month from now. So that's what I would focus on is building a portfolio first before I try all this other marketing stuff. I need to know exactly the type of work I want to do. Then I have to figure out how to build a portfolio of that kind of work. Now, if you're not doing wedding photography, this still applies to you. If you want to do mountain bike photography, well, you've got to create some amazing portfolio pieces. And that can be actually a lot easier than if you do something like weddings because it's really easy to find mountain bike people who want to get cool photos of themselves. So I would go to a bike park. I would track people down and say, hey, I'd love to take some awesome photos of you. Would you be up for that? I'll do it for free. And then you build that portfolio and you get testimonials. Now, part two of this obviously is the testimonials. So if you are second shooting, you're probably not going to get testimonials from the clients. You might, you might not. What I would do to start off is just get character references. So I would get testimonials from the photographers you're helping. So I'd say, hey, if I was actually good to work with, if I was helpful for you, would you consider giving me just a character testimonial recommendation to put on my website? And photographers who are already established, most of the time, if they're good people, they just want to help other people. And so they'll gladly do that. They'll say, hey, Ryan's an awesome photographer. He's second shot for me. And I'm so excited he's doing his own thing right now. Or you reach out and get character testimonials from other people who are not necessarily clients or people who you who you've worked with, but have known you in some way, shape or form. So you'll reach out to them and say, Hey, I'm just looking for kind of quick testimonials or character references to put on my website. Do you have anything to say it to potential clients who are considering hiring me? And they might say, yeah, Ryan is a hard worker. Everything he does is so excellent, so creative. And honestly, it's the best thing ever. You should hire him. Like <laughs> that has nothing to do with an actual testimonial of you doing the work. It's not as powerful as that, but it definitely gives you that extra credibility. Okay. And then the third thing that you can do if you don't have any testimonials and you can't do that for some reason, is look for data and facts that you can use as testimonials for you. So for example, let's say that you want to get into mountain bike photography again. Let's say you actually look it up and you figure out, okay, so if you want to get sponsored by a mountain bike company, you need to have a portfolio. Now, what percentage of mountain bike people never make any money? Um, okay, that's 75%. So you can actually share that as kind of social proof and testimonials on your website. Like 75% of photographers, 75% of mountain bikers who don't have portfolio pieces wind up never getting a sponsor. My work is going to help you do that. So you're not actually giving them a testimonial directly to you, but you're using data as a testimonial to speak for the value of your service. I hope that made sense. 
So testimonials are worth paying for and worth putting energy into. I don't mean buying people out and getting them to say things that are um, in, incongruent with who you are and what you do. I mean, literally, they are worth actually doing a styled shoot and doing work for free and trading for um, so that you can actually create this kind of rapport with your clients and get people to believe so that then they'll buy. Step three. And by the way, if this has been helpful so far, or you have questions, please leave me a comment below and hit that like button. It really helps me out. Step number three, who, not how. Now, this is a book you can actually look up. I've got the Audible book and I've listened to it a couple times now. It's massively helpful, but I'll give you the whole book in like five seconds, okay? The basic premise is it's not about how you build a business. It's about who you need to help you build your business. It's not about how you're going to climb Mount Everest. It's about who you need to help you figure out how to climb Mount Everest, right? So you want to take any project, anything that you're working on, say who, not how. Not how do I learn how to build a website, but who can help me build a website for free or affordably? Who can I trade services with? All that kind of stuff to build your business rather than figuring out how to do everything. This is massive, and I wish someone had told me this earlier in the process. When most people start out in their marketing, in their photography, in their businesses, they try and do everything themselves. That's an issue because it takes so much longer and you never get to the same place of excellence as somebody who's been doing that for years. So for example, you could try and build your own website. Now, this is actually one that you probably should and could do very easily because now there's drag and drop editors. But back when I started, building a website was just a headache, okay? It took me a month to do, and it was so bad by the time I actually finished making this website that I wound up having to do it again and again, and I designed my website like 12 times. Whereas, if I had invested a little bit of money or traded somebody's services and said, hey, I'll take some amazing photos of you, your brand, whatever, in exchange for you doing this website development for me, I could have had access to someone who has already spent hours and hours and hours and years learning this craft and gotten all of that excellence for a very small price, which is my time, my trading, my services, and my expertise. So who, not how. Now, how does this apply to your marketing? Okay, I want you to ask yourself, who already has my clients? Find those partners. Those are the people you want to build a team around. It's not about trying to do everything yourself in business and in life. It's about trying to build a team, network, and help other people. As Zig Ziglar said, you can get everything in life that you want if you just help enough people get what they want. So think about that for a second. Who already has your customer and how can you help them? So obviously, if you're a wedding photographer, that's the easy one. There's wedding planners, there's all the vendors, there's um, florists, there are officiants, there are venues, all this good stuff. So if I were doing this again and I were chasing down wedding photography clients, what would I do? Probably I'd reach out to all of them, but specifically I would say, okay, who, who is the person who my customer goes to just before they come to me? And in my case, trying to do wedding photography, it would be the venue. So I would reach out to venues and say, hmm, they have the clients, they could send them my way, but how can I create a win-win-win situation for all of us? A win for me, a win for the venue, and a win for the client. Now, probably the way that I would do this is I'd say, okay, it's a win for me if they send me the business, right? It's a win for them, possibly if I give them a testimonial. It's a win for them if I give them some media and I guarantee they get images from the day right away. It's a win for them if they like working with me and they know I'm great to work with. It's a win for them. Maybe I could actually pay them for the referral. I give them 500 bucks every single referral they send my way. It's a win for the customer if maybe I give a free album to any referral from the venue. It's a win to the customer if I give them, say, 20% off for referrals exclusively from that venue. It's a win for the customer if I include an engagement shoot if they book through that venue, right? So I can create all these bonuses so that everybody is winning and benefiting from this partnership. And by doing that, you incentivize people to refer you, you incentivize people to work with you, and you actually just create these win-win-win situations where everybody is better off. The customer gets better service, the venue might get a kickback or get better photos or builds their business a little bit more effectively and gets to work with you and you get more clients, right? So win, win, win. That's what you want to look for and you want the who, not the how. That's what I would do. I wouldn't worry about SEO because that takes six to 12 months to make work. I wouldn't worry about building a massive Instagram following because again, that can take months to happen and it's not consistent. I wouldn't worry about Facebook ads because I don't have any money right now. I'm just starting over. I would worry about who has my client and how can I help them? 
How can I build their business? How can I provide value to them and create those win-win-win situations, okay? If you just took this one thing, <laughs> never mind the other ones, you applied this one thing to your business, I promise you, you will be able to do things you could never even believe you could do once you start building a team that is working together. So you're helping everybody and everybody's winning as a result. That's where that momentum comes from, not from doing everything yourself. Who, not how, okay? If that was helpful, hit that like button, leave a comment. Step four, okay, so you've got this. You've, uh, let's recap. You've niched down, you've developed the perfect avatar. You've gone through, you've created an amazing portfolio, you've gathered testimonials so that people are believing that you can provide what they want. Next, you're going to focus on who, not how, targeting those people who already are serving your customer and figuring out how you can create win-win-win situations. And finally, well, step four is gonna be be different. You wanna challenge the status quo and figure out where those kind of gaps are in the market that other people aren't meeting already. So for example, let's say that you want to get into surf photography. Now there's a million photographers who are already doing surf photography. So you have to figure out, okay, what are the pain points for the brands who are already buying these photos? What issues do they have in actually getting these photos? What kind of things do they wish they were getting that they're not getting? How can I be different? How can I position myself in a way that is different from what 99% of everybody else is doing, right? So with wedding photography, we're going to go there because that's the industry I know most intimately, but this is going to apply to every single situation, every single type of photography. With wedding photography, most photographers, if you actually get a package, they're doing the exact same thing. They've got like albums are this much and my prints are this much and I have X number of hours and they send this big like list of all the things that come with their packages and they probably have three packages there's like a silver a bronze and a gold and they're going to get back to you and want to do a phone call conversation and their pricing is all going to be around three grand if it's in the city that i'm in right now or more and then right so they've all got like very similar things now you have to say to yourself what are the issues that my clients are having my target customer is having with what already exists what other people are already offering so one of them might be okay my target client is, I'm in Calgary right now, we're outside of Banff, it's an amazing national park, and I want to do more elopement photography. Now the problem is, for those clients, most of them are going to get charged really high travel fees for all the photographers they reach out to, because to actually go up to the mountains for a day and helicopter up to Mount Kananaskis or whatever costs a lot of time for the photographer, and so they're going to bill the client an extra two grand for that. Maybe I can figure out a way that I can get rid of that billing. And so I'm doing things totally different from what most photographers are doing. So for example, if I want to do those elopements up in the mountains, maybe I figure out some kind of a package with other wedding, with other, <laughs> with a wedding planner, with a wedding stylist and with a officiant. And we have a team of four of us and we actually go and we do four weddings in a day and we do them all on Mount Kananaskis. So we only have to travel once. We only have to give up that time once. And then we just do weddings back to back. We do four elopements. And so that way we can actually kind of cut those costs down by 75% and we're providing more service to the client because they don't have to find all these individual vendors and we can maybe reduce the price a little bit because obviously everybody is going to be happy. The clients are getting more service. They're getting those saved travel fees and we don't have to necessarily do as much editing because it's all shot on the same day in the same location, kind of around the same time. And so it's going to be a lot faster and easier for us to produce. So all those kind of things like reusing props and providing extra services that other photographers aren't doing, all those things allow you to be different, set yourself apart. So then when you actually send a proposal and you position yourself on your website, you can say, hey, we're different because we do it this way and everybody else is doing it that way. That's what you're looking for, right? You're looking for how you can be different and challenge that status quo. So yes, a lot of photographers in my area charge $3,000. Now there's two different routes you could go with this. One is maybe... The problem is that most of these photographers charge a lot, but give a little. So maybe I charge way more and give way more. So maybe I charge nine grand, but that also includes a photo booth and it includes your engagement, includes your album, it includes two parent albums, it includes drone photography, it includes like maybe I do that way. And I actually create something that is totally different because it gives way more than any other photographer out there. Or maybe I do it the other way and I say, you know what, my target client doesn't really care about having amazing photos of the father-daughter dance. They just want to have amazing like portraits and they want amazing ceremony photos. And that's the most important part. So maybe I challenge the status quo by instead of giving full day coverage, I say, you know what? I found most of my clients, they want amazing ceremony. They want amazing photo shoot photos and that's it. So I do three hours of photography for a thousand bucks and I actually can do that three times a week and I won't burn myself out. It's the funnest part of the photos to take. So 
great. I win, they win. It's a win-win situation. Now, how can I make it a win-win-win? I can focus on the other vendors and what I can do differently to help them. So how can I do that, right? So it just, it kind of steamrolls, <laughs> it steamrolls, it snowballs from there. You can think to yourself, how can I be different? How can I challenge what things are already going on? Do it differently, position myself differently. And that gives you the edge in your marketing by solving problems in a unique way that nobody else is. Okay. Now, lastly, step number five, you want to do less, not more. This is the major thing I would focus on and tell myself starting over is it's more important to do a few things way better than anybody else than it is to do a million different things and divide your attention. You only have so many hours in the day, right? You only have so many, um, that whole, the subtle art of not giving a, f that book is all about the fact that you have so much energy per day, right? You can spend it on a hundred things and put one unit of en energy into a hundred things and make one unit of progress towards a hundred different goals. Or you can put all of it into say three things and make 30 times the progress from somebody else who's spreading their attention over a hundred, right? So hopefully that makes sense. You want to do less, not more. So that applies to absolutely everything. So when it comes to your offer, what it is that you do for your client, who your client is, you should just have one main thing. So your client, one specific client, one specific type of work, the offer, the package that you create, you want to have one main package, one thing that you do, and you do it so much better than anybody else out there. It gets rid of confusion in your marketing. It makes your marketing so much more potent and it appeals to a much more specific audience, which makes it just the perfect solution for that audience rather than like a vague, oh, this kind of fits me, but I don't really want these three things. I just want these four, right? Now, you also want to apply this to your branding, to your website, to your marketing methods. You only want to pursue one marketing method at a time. So you don't want to do Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook and Facebook ads and Instagram ads and Snapchat and Twitter and vendor networking and 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 right you want to do one specific thing and do it so much better than anybody else that you just blow everyone out of the water that will give you far more leverage that's always been the case in every single thing i've ever worked on any other friend that i talk to in the industry yes eventually you want to build some seo on your website maybe you want to have different referral streams who are coming in towards you you want to have an instagram account so that you get some credibility and you get some feeds from there like i'm not saying it can't be done i'm just saying that you're Greatest leverage is going to be found by focusing on one area first and really getting that one place rocking before you focus on these other things, okay? Now, do just a few things, execute better than anybody else. And that is really all there is to it. Five steps. I'd niche down, find that perfect avatar and determine exactly the kind of work I want to do. Two, I'd build a portfolio of the exact kind of work I want to create and get raving testimonials. Now, as you're doing this, as you're getting more and more work, you want to be updating those testimonials. If you can get video testimonials, all the better. And if you can get specific ones from clients you've actually helped and show those results, so much better, right? Step three, we want to focus on who, not how. Who already has your target market, your target client? Because if you can get them to partner with you, you can just multiply the results in your business with hardly any effort. Step four, we want to be different. We want to challenge the status quo and we want to serve people in a way that nobody else is doing. Step five, do less, not more. Pick a few things, narrow down on every single topic. Your marketing, you want one method. Your avatar, you want one avatar. Type of work you do, you want one type of work, right? You want one, 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 one. Do less, not more, and really go deep on those things and do them better than anybody else, okay? Now, here's an example of going all in on one strategy. I had a guy, a client named Desmond Denton. Now, He's an awesome guy. He moved over from South Africa to the States and through focusing on SEO, he managed to book 10 weddings in two months. So he didn't focus on SEO and Instagram and Snapchat and building his website. I mean, the website is part of SEO <laughs> and vendor networking like a million different ways. He focused on one thing. He said, you know what? I believe in SEO. I'm going to buy this SEO course that you've got here, Ryan. I'm going to follow what you say and I'm just going to do this. And that's all he did. He went hard on the SEO. And because of that, he saw results. And I'm not saying that SEO is the mother load and the thing that you should pursue right away. I'm just saying Go all in on one specific strategy that's going to get you way better results. Now, if you are interested in SEO, I've got that SEO course and you can use the code all in for 50% off. I'm going to do that for the first few action takers, just as a bonus for watching this far in the video. Cool. Step six, <laughs> what I want you to do now, now that you've covered those five steps, you should have some ideas in your mind and kind of be thinking, hmm, I'm making some mistakes here, or I need to pivot, or I need to change something, or I need to focus on this because I really haven't been thinking about it that way. I want you to share that number one action in the comments below because that's going to start you taking action. It's going to start that process of declaring what it is you need to do next because that is where results come from. 
from actually taking action, not just learning, not just consuming content, because I am so victim of this. You watch a million different workshops on marketing and you don't actually act on any of them. So you have a million different ideas, but you don't really apply any one thing. So what is that one thing, that number one action that you need to take as a result of watching this video, as a result of building your business, okay? Then go and execute, right? I wanna hear from you. I wanna see what that action thing is. Hit the like button if this was helpful for you. <laughs> Otherwise, just take off. It's all good. Hit that like or dislike, doesn't matter. I hope this video has given you some value. These are the things that I would do if I were building my wedding photography business or any photography business from scratch this year, the photography business reset. All right, I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, go create something awesome. Peace.